It is the Texax Rewind. I don't know why I said the Texax. It's just <laughs> Texax Rewind. Lee, what's on your mind, man? That's uh, how we start the fan show. Let's do something different. Yeah. Tell me something you're thinking of right now. I'm so glad I don't know what Britney Spears wears to her <laughs> show. Okay. All right. Well, just for that, we're going to have it playing in the background. Oh, uh, man. What's on my mind right now? Kelly. Feast week. Basketball, football, food, family. I'm loving life. Nice. Sutton, give me a hot sports take. Anything. Without, like, firing people. Yeah, don't fire me. Unfortunately, A&M is 3-7. and seven. Mm. So that is the hot sports take. It, it is what it is. It, it is sucks. It is. Pardon the language. On the show today, we did the go hour, and we talked about the Heisman Trophy because, yeah, that's what we do. Uh, getting it done with Ryan Swope. Ryan, obviously, uh, very disappointed the way the season's gone. He gave us some of his insight. Around college football with Aaron Torres, the great thing about having AT on, he sometimes interviews me on the show that I host. It's weird how that happens, but it, it does happen. And then we had these knuckleheads, the fan show guys. Uh, watch it. Tell me what you think afterwards, all right? Bye. So has your opinion of Lincoln Riley evolved at all since getting to USC? Do you think – I'm trying to remember. I don't know if you were very high on him. You're not, you, ne you never said he was a bad coach by any stretch, no, but overrated I because he, of his situation. Yeah, right? and I think, uh, I think he still is. Okay. Um, but, I mean, he's not, he's not incompetent. I'm not saying that. Don't get me wrong. But – yeah, I think, you know, they gave him the keys to the Ferrari. He said, hey, look, he's got a Ferrari. Yeah, somebody else gave it to him. Bob Stoops gave it to him. Bob Stoops did give it to him. But what, what about what he, the job he's doing there at USC? Hard to, hard to tell because <laughs> to, of who to, they play? To, to, me, to me, you have to be a complete and total moron not to be able to be successful at USC, and especially when with the rules the way they are now. You know, he, he brought in the guy from the receiver from Pittsburgh, yeah. right? And he brought his quarterback with him and all the things you can do now without guys having to sit out. And now there's rumors that a certain wide receiver 90 miles away is considering that as an option. Yeah, and, and, uh, and let's face it, the Pac-12 is, you know, there's about four or five really good teams, and then everybody else is average to below to way below average. Yep. So, All right, number four. Number four, C.J. Stroud, the Ohio State Buckeyes quarterback, last week threw five. That's five touchdown passes. Of course, it was against Indiana, which is probably just a little bit better than Colorado. It was a sixth game in which he's thrown at least four touchdown passes, so that's pretty impressive no matter who you're playing. Uh, overall, 2,750 yards, 34 touchdowns, and just four interceptions. What will it take for C.J. Stroud to get in your top two? Is it, is it really beating Michigan and having uh, a solid game? Well, yeah, he's going to have to probably have a big game against Michigan. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you you win the Heisman Trophy in in the big games. You know, you should put put up huge numbers against Indiana. What are you going to do in the games that really really matter? Yep. And then number three, Blake Corum, the Michigan running back. That's a big pat. Blah, blah, blah. That's a big, powerful junior. He has the nation's third highest rushing total, 1,349 yards, scored 17 touchdowns uh, last week in a 34-3 victory over Nebraska, which may be worse than Colorado and Indiana. But he still rushed for 162 yards and a touchdown. Blake Corum's been over 100 yards rushing in each of the last seven games. He scored at least one touchdown in every game. He is solid. He He's is a solid. really good Really good running back. How about this next guy, number two, I'm, moving up the ranks? I'm sticking with Drake May, the North Carolina quarterback. How can you not? I guess our punter did a pretty good job. Uh, <laughs> That's where we're at. Uh, I'll, I'll give it to I'll give it to Antonio Johnson. Uh, I thought he played great. Antonio Johnson did play great. I think it's a great one. Um, who didn't get it done? Well, our offense. Um, I mean, I, I've never seen a stat where your offense and a quarter – has negative yards. Um, you know, I don't think it took us in the second half. I think it took us a quarter and a half to get a first down. Um, and then it took us, well, nearly three and a half quarters to put points on the board. So a little disappointed in our offense right now. Yeah, no doubt about it. Who's going to get it done this weekend against UMass? I think Connor. I think Connor has a big game. I'm, you know, I'm with an opportunity. He gets to, I guess this is his first start at Kyle Field, isn't it? Um, uh, uh, so that'll that'll be fun for him to to uh, to get to experience that, and you know, <laughs> I think we'll. I, I hope we win this game. I, I really do. And I mean, obviously, one successful one isn't, but just compare the year that Lincoln Riley's had and what his departure to OU has meant for them, and then Brent Venables coming in and the year he's had. Well, it's.
it's really interesting, and you live in this part of the country. You know, I'll say this is, is I, I give credit. Um, I think OU fans are starting to open their eyes to this. What, what I said on, on Sunday or Saturday or whatever, and I, I talked about it on my podcast, and, you know, the, the, the video on YouTube got a lot of commentary, is, you know, it, it's amazing to me that in the world that we live in, you know, Lincoln Riley goes to a 4-8 and eight program. USC was 4-8 and eight last year. They're 9-1, and one, and if they went out, they're going to the playoff. We don't have to do this fake conversation of will they get in, will they – if they went out, they're making the college football playoff, okay? Sonny Dykes is 10-0. and 0. Jim Moore got UConn Bowl eligible. Brian Kelly just won the SEC West. And so it cracks me up because you have these Oklahoma fans. Apparently, Brent Venables is the only coach in college football that needs more time in year one in the world of the transfer portal. And so, you know, I guess what I would say about that is a couple of things. One – I think Lincoln Riley is, like, weirdly maybe underrated. Like, you know, all I heard was, okay, great offensive mind, but, you know, does he know how to really run a program? Does he know how to really build a program? And, by the way, like, I was part of that too, right? Like, oh, he inherited something really good from Bob Stoops. Let's see what he has to do when he's building from ground up. Well, he's done it. Uh, But I just think the bigger thing is, you know, that state north of you guys, all I heard all offseason was, Lincoln left this place in a state of disarray. We have the right guy here, blah, 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 blah. And look, if you want to argue that Venables will be okay, that as Oklahoma transitions to the SEC, he's the right guy, I disagree with you. But if you want to argue that, that's fine. But the idea that the program is somehow better off than Lincoln Riley, without Lincoln Riley, excuse me, it's just idiotic. It's one of those dumb college football conversations that, you know, takes up the narrative and the airwaves in January, February, and we don't have much to talk about. To me, now it's a foregone conclusion. Mm. If we had pulled those games out, I don't think it would be a foregone conclusion. Mm-hmm. But I do think that we probably would have done something. We know. We knew last year. Yeah. Right? It doesn't matter. Like, if they're getting success, yeah. it, if they're grinding out victories, right. you know, it, I don't think it forces it. I, I agree. I think there would have been a much more – likely scenario to blame the injuries and the illnesses Mm -hmm. and uh stick with with what we have but uh we we need a top 30 offense in college football if we can get that we'll we would win a lot more games now suddenly the defense is a problem too and that that is everybody's focused on the offense i think the offense is terrible it's painful to watch but the defense is keeping the offense off the field a lot. Time of possession this year, I can't imagine how lopsided it is. Mm. When they showed us. speaking yeah. of that, they showed a stat a minute ago that uh UMass was thirty two minutes a game time of possession, thirteenth in the country. Isn't that what App State did to us? Mm. They kept the ball away from us the whole game. But it, that sounds like some I mean I don't I have not studied UMass. Admittedly that was pretty low on my priority list uh, at the beginning <laughs> of the season. With that being said based on what App State did to us. Yeah. And other teams have done similar things where they play keep away and hold yeah. the defense on the field. If that's going to be UMass's game plan, which it looks like it would be given their statistics, mm-hmm. we need to get off the field in third down because mm-hmm. if they're going to hold the ball for 32 minutes, we're not going to score 30 points. Third down has been It's hard to score horrific. 30 points when they've got that much time. Well, I'll just say this. Would, does UMass, do they keep it close to, with any team in the SEC outside of Vanderbilt? The answer is no. I'm sure. not sure they do with Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt's offense is yeah, not bad. Uh, Vanderbilt's right now. offense has yeah. an offense. Yeah, they do have an offense. <laughs> and if we're going to be realists, and I hate being the realist in the room because I try to be the positive guy, but are we better than Vanderbilt? No. I don't. I, I like so their when we say, right now. can I like they keep offense. up with anybody better I than like Vanderbilt? Their offense better than our offense going against our defense? Yes. There's Agreed. a chance we're worse than Vanderbilt this season. What do we do here? What are we supposed to do, son? Like. What are, but what are we like? What are we share, liking to? I want you to tell share, us what are we liking, what are we subscribing to, and what are we sharing? The YouTube channel. Subscribe to that. S- subscribe to that and then like it. Can you like the actual Absolutely. channel? Absolutely. You can do the You can like the channel? Can, no, the, the, the video. individual video. The individual video do yeah. thumbs up. Okay. The Aggie thumbs up. Right. And then what else are we doing? We're gonna share it with our friends. What about our enemies? Would we let them watch? They need to Abs- watch. They need to watch, yeah. yeah. They need to get on the right side of things. You know, I used to give a hard time to all the LSU and Texas people who would come on and like, what No, you come watching? on. Come, you know what? No, no, no. Come on. That's, that's money you. for Texas. They Tex don't Ags. have a show like this. No. 
That should tell you something. I've never them. watched. If they did, I didn't watch. Yeah. But they yeah. don't have a they show a, like this. They have a TV channel that's just horrible. So They do? Yes. Oh, that's right. Yes, yes. I don't know how we got on this topic, but thanks for watching.